Well, welcome this week to a very special episode of Views from the Field, where we're going to move back to being sounds from the field. Where we have the good fortune of having Carson Marshall joining us again. Hi, Carson. And Carson has recorded a wonderful episode for his Clearing the Stage podcast, and it includes our dear friend and colleague, Valerie York Zimmerman, who's also here. Hi, Valerie. We're going to get to hear the episode now. uh, It's a wonderful episode combining meditation, Carson's music, and a gentleman named Umar Paracha, who incidentally comes from the same hometown that Rumi lived in. So uh, we're very fortunate to have Everybody here, Carson, Valerie, and the opportunity to share this with you live. And then we're going to come back and talk a little bit about our thoughts around it, maybe some comments, possible questions for Carson and Valerie. So in a moment here, I'm going to share my screen, and we we hope you enjoy Carson's episode from Clearing the Stage. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. There are three parts to this episode. First, Valerie will lead a guided sitting meditation to help you get grounded and ready to receive this piece of music fully. Then, at the meditation's deepest point, Umar and I will play a piece of music. And to close, Valerie will reconnect you with the space around you. So, perhaps take a moment to grab your favorite headphones and find a place where you can fully relax and won't be physically disturbed for the next few minutes. And with that, I'll turn it over to Valerie. Let's begin this mindfulness practice by shifting out of doing anything. Out of going anywhere into a mode of non-doing, just being. Perhaps taking the posture of a mountain, feeling your feet and toes connected with the ground beneath you, the legs rooted down into the earth. feeling your hands resting open on your thighs, the arms becoming the sloping sides of the mountain, your head the lofty peak, gently lifting just slightly up toward the sky. Noticing what it feels like to be supported by the seat and the ground beneath. Now sitting here erect, yet at ease, allowing the body to become still, seeing if perhaps you can settle a little deeper into this moment, just this moment. Becoming present and awake, expressing your inner dignity outward. The eyes can be closed or cast down if that's comfortable for you. And now bringing your attention to the breath. Just this breath. Allowing yourself to notice the breath wherever it is more vivid for you. Perhaps feeling the breath as it flows into the nostrils and as it flows out of the nostrils. Or noticing the breath in the chest. 
feeling how the lungs inflate on the in-breath and deflate on the out-breath. Perhaps experiencing the inspiration or inspirare of the in-breath and the releasing or letting go on the out-breath. Or perhaps dropping down into the belly, feeling how the belly expands on the in-breath and how it falls back toward the spine on the out-breath. Or in the entire body, as a whole, just dwelling with the breath wherever you feel it most. And now, if you like, you can imagine lying back, being carried along by the waves of your breathing. Perhaps feeling the gentle rise and the fall of each breath. Allowing yourself to be supported, even embraced by the waves of your own breathing. knowing that the felt sensations and awareness of the body or the felt sensations and awareness of the breath can always be a safe place for you to gently return your attention, to just come back. Whenever the mind wanders off into memories of the past, or worries of the future, or any place that is not here and not present in this moment. Always remembering that the body and the breath can be an anchor for you to safe harbor in the present moment. Just this moment. If you begin to feel uncomfortable in any way. And now, if you like, bringing your attention to sounds, perhaps expanding your consciousness of hearing all sounds in and around you as they arise. Noticing sounds outside the room, like birds singing or traffic flowing. Sounds inside the room, like people moving or a dog stretching. Even sounds within your own body, like the sounds of your breathing or swallowing. Seeing if you can simply open and perhaps explore the sounds with interest and curiosity, without judging or being critical of them in any way. Letting go of any aversion that may arise. 
perhaps noticing the quality of the sounds. Are they high or low? Loud or soft? Deep or shallow? Light or dark? Simple or complicated? Melodic or discordant? Pleasing or harsh? Do the waves of sound rise and fall, ebb and flow, crest and wane, come and go? Now attending to the silences, opening to them. Noticing the quality of the silences, perhaps the beauty of the spaciousness. Always remembering, of course, that if you become uncomfortable for any reason, attending to awareness of either the body or the breath, as we did in the beginning of this practice, is a safe place to return and can serve as an anchor to keep you present. And now, allowing yourself to open fully, perhaps becoming completely receptive, hearing all the notes, as well as the vast spaciousness of the silences, all with a beginner's ear as if you are hearing them for the first time. Seeing if you can listen mindfully, perhaps surrendering to the art of listening. Seeing if you can experience the sounds and the silences with an open heart, mind, and body.
मस्त कलंदर अली दम दम दे अंदर दमा दम मस्त कलंदर अली दा पहला नंबर दमा दम मस्त कलंदर अली दम दम दे अंदर दमा दम मस्त कलंदर
And now, whenever you are ready, gently opening your eyes, coming back to the room, perhaps taking a moment to become aware of the environment around you. And if you like, as we began this practice, once again, intentionally sitting like a mountain, noticing how that feels in this moment. Becoming aware of any sensations in the toes. the heels, 
or the balls of the feet pressed against the ground beneath them. Perhaps feeling the legs rooted firmly into the earth below. Maybe noticing what your buttocks feel like as you sit here, like a mountain, grounded, stable, majestic, as all mountains are. Always honoring the wisdom of your body. Doing whatever feels right for you in this moment. Whether it's standing, stretching, bending, shifting your position, whatever helps you feel centered and balanced right now. And if you like, checking in, inquiring for yourself about the quality of your experience right now. Is it the same as when we started? Or is it different? Perhaps becoming aware of any physical sensations present in the body right now. Feeling them. Noticing any emotions or feelings that are present or may be arising for you. Or any thoughts that are moving through the clear blue sky of your mind, just observing. And now perhaps reflecting for a moment about whether you might benefit from the practice of gently opening, listening a little more deeply, allowing yourself to listen and hear without judging, without avoiding. simply being with the sounds and with the silences. The serendipitous of how this group here in front of us, this community that we have gathered here today and we were given the opportunity to listen to and experience this beautiful moving sound and silence and meditation and music on an Easter Sunday, no less, Passover weekend 
the month of Ramadan and other holidays that may be taking place in the springtime of 2022 is beyond me. I'm so grateful right now. I'm really grateful for everyone here, for Carson, for Valerie, for the ability to, to be here and, and be in community to listen to this beautiful podcast. Carson, thank you so much. It was a great gift, this creation. Valerie, your meditation is so lovely, so grounding, so needed in this time of what we say is post-pandemic, but actually is still pandemic, world at war. Such a gift. Uh, it's amazing that this happened in this way today for us. So Carson, I don't know if the words to the lighthouse were available in English in any way, but I would love to be able to have those. Is that something to ask uh, Umar? Or? He's working on it. Okay. Okay, yeah, we'll look I, forward I want to them that. Too. Yeah, look forward to that. So, what was this like for others here? Any comments, questions, thoughts? Linda? Well, I'd like to share because I, I feel like I can't even keep it in. Um, I, I, you know, I think the meditation at the beginning was very helpful in just, you know, settling. And I noticed that when I was listening, I felt like I was doing listening and I was, you know, really trying to, uh, I don't know, just lots of images came through. Um, and then at some point, I feel like I just was taken over by the music. And I mean, there were some thoughts that the music um, like inspired or I felt like I was saying it felt like it was the cycle of life or something. Like it was just ebbing and flowing. And But at a certain point, I have to say, Oh, just tears came down my my face, and it was just so beautiful. And the only the only thing that it like built up to this point of the only thing I could describe it is this is love. This this is love. And at the end, I just felt like when um, Valerie was kind of guiding us into some inquiry and she said something about thoughts or I just felt like I felt like I was washed clean and that was just really amazing it was just an amazing experience so I went from doing listening to being the listening thank you It really is a journey. Carson, did you layer on the plucking to your violin playing? So Umar actually also plays ukulele. Ah, that's Umar on ukulele. Yeah. I, uh, 
yeah, I'm gonna, there's a few little tweaks I'm gonna do. And that's one of the things I'll add back in, is that he also is playing that. So it's a great, great question. Thanks so much for sharing, Linda. Peter, welcome. And Marileo, we didn't have a chance to say welcome to you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, um, so I don't have those little lovely descriptions like Linda or you know, I have the different mindset, I guess, with the more cognitive thing, but there's no question for me because I've always been a big fan of all music. Um, the So the setup, I, I agree, the setup with Valerie's meditation to then listen to music was real helpful for me because I could jump right into music and come with a mindset that's all scattered and the music may or may not take my mind down, but here that really helped and while linda was saying that the um she was doing the listening or doing the music i'm not sure which how she was wording it was to me it was more like the music and the and the um singing was doing me in the sense that i kind of um was allow allowing it to do something and that really got me into a very ab absorbed state. I would call it meditative state, but I think that's a little too vague. It's just really, really deeply absorbed. Um, noticing myself, and, and again, it could have been because of the, the meditation at the beginning, um, that there was very few distractions. I would have a tendency to um, be thinking about something else or, hey, I like that part of the music or what am I gonna say later? Those kinds of things. Um, and I was curious about the fact that because it wasn't in English, whether that helped me stay really with the feelings as opposed to getting into whatever the words may have said and maybe triggered some thinking and some imagery. And then maybe for me, I don't know, but um, pull me away. I have heard, I'm, I'm not that familiar with this type of music and, and, and this kind of thing, but I've had heard um, uh, Colin, Colin Barks, who does a lot of translation of Rumi and David Darling, who I think is a shallowist, do Rumi poem in English with the shallow. And I get caught up more. I, I mean, I like the music for sure, but I listen to the words too much. And so I'm pulled, pulled, pulled back and forth. I really appreciated it. You just really just let me just and let the music do me and do whatever it is supposed to do. And whatever those words meant, they, there was some sense of really strong emotions and feelings going on that were, um, they were not, uh, they were deep and not over the top. And, you know, it wasn't like, oh my God, I'm so full of love and passion and this and that, but, but really settled deep inside of me more, more in my core and again for me this is more more significant i think if i would have got more excited a little more adrenaline going it would have been more like i was at a concert um one last comment though for sure and i think carson mentioned this at the beginning of, of the recording having headphones really helped i mean i was really you know as i know listening to music with headphones makes a difference and i'm not saying that this wasn't helpful not to have headphones, but there's no question having these headphones, I could really, really get inside with the eyes closed and such. So, so I really appreciate it, both of you. Thank you, Valerie and Carson and Alan. So thank you. Thank you, Gus. Just for those who may be viewing and may not know, um, Carson is the language Persian. I'm actually not 100% sure, and I'd hate to say something that was incorrect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Valerie. Yes, um, one of the things that I think is very beautiful about this offering, <clears throat> excuse me, 
is that it is in a language I don't know. And so it's really in the universal language of music, which I think makes it so appealing. It's universal um, and it doesn't get me caught up in stories and things like that. So I've heard this now a couple of times and it to me, it, it's a sublime, mystical, ethereal journey, actually. Um, I've always loved Rumi and his wonderful poetry and the the art from that part of the world, which, you know, is very compatible. It's when, during the music, there comes a point where it starts going faster and faster. And I remember seeing uh, the whirling dervish dance that is so famous from that part of the world, uh, which was done um, by Rumi and some of his, I think, mystical mentors. Uh, so I could, it just, it transported, it transports me to another time, another place. It transforms my experience into this very um, ethereal place. And so I'm so grateful um, to Carson because to be involved in this particular piece is such a gift. I think it's exquisitely beautiful. Uh, your music, Umer's plaintive voice and his, uh, uh, you know, I guess what he is, is plucking on the ukulele. It's just, and your violin playing, of course. So thank you, thank you uh, for this wonderful gift of, of music. Thank you, Valerie, my, it's my pleasure. I, uh, it's hard to take feel like I take responsibility, you know? It's like, it's just so, such a joy. Thank you, Valerie. Carson, how did you meet Umer? So I actually met him on uh, this app called Clubhouse. Um, some of you may have heard of it, it's an audio only uh, platform. And this was during kind of the heat of the pandemic. And I was in Miami, isolating and unable to play music or really be in person with anyone. And this app kind of allows you to uh, collaborate and really share in, in real time. There's very low latency, like in Zoom, there's quite a bit of latency. And this allows you to collaborate in real time and play music together. So I was playing music with people from all over the world. Um, you know, being able to share a kind of a transformative moment with someone, you know, there's people from India that we would be playing in real time together, you know, instruments that I had never heard. It was, it was just such a incredible experience. And I really feel like through Umer and the people that he's introduced to me, I really found Kind of my voice as a improviser you know i'm a classically trained violinist we always play the the chart you know we don't play our own music and i think that he definitely was a kind of a gateway into me playing my own music which has been amazing and you know we've obviously since met in person and are continuing to collaborate and you know hopefully this next year we'll do live performances so He's just, uh, I actually was texting him hoping that he could actually come to this call, but he's in a rehearsal, so he can't make it right now. Oh. Well, thank you for trying that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a gift, and I appreciate your allowing us to play it today and have this session with it, and um, look forward to more. So thanks a lot, Carson. Yeah, I think MJ had something that she wanted to share, too. Oh, sorry. Missed your hand up there, MJ. MJ? Wow. Uh, 
it's very interesting. You know, I totally agree with what everybody has said. And the thing about music is it's a universal soul. Not universal, it's universal soul because it's mm-hmm. it's down in the soul. And although I did not know what the words were, I connected on a soul level. And every morning I look, and first of all, let me just say, Alan, thank you so much for following your intuition. Thank you. Because it is a gift. It was a gift to me today. And not to knock Florida, but great things come out of Florida. And I'm going to just say, Kadanji Brown Jackson said it best, stay in your lane. She stays in her lane. And every morning I get up when I'm at work and I see the quote by Thomas Edison. If we all did the things that we, if we all did the things we are capable of, we would literally astound ourselves. And that was just totally to the heart. And if East met West and had a baby, that would be it. So I'm really grateful to be the recipient of that, the rebirth of a new universal link nation. And I'm so grateful, so grateful to have been a part of that and to hear. So thank you. Thank you all for staying in your lane and listening listening to your heart because that's the way that we're all going to get this ship back in the dock. (laughs) Thank you, MJ. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Martha. So, um, first of all, thank you. It was a very special and deep experience for myself as well. And hearing MJ speaking of speak of the heart, um, I would like to contribute that I had quite strong physical reactions to the music. I could notice my heartbeat um, adjusting to the speed and the intensity of the music and I had a lot of images coming up a lot of images of waves funnily and I tried to look for an anchor like from time to time I thought oh this is mindfulness so you know try to find an anchor but it was very difficult to find an anchor for me because it felt like um, a three-dimensional space that was moving and depending on what instrument came to the forefront it was very difficult to explain what I experienced but it was it felt three-dimensional somehow and it was a very physical experience for me. And I, after a while, I allowed myself to just be taken over by the music as other, other of you have shared. <clears throat> and um, yeah, it felt like a meditation, but a different type of meditation. And a very spiritual type of meditation as well. Thank you. And may I ask a question? I would love to know how it was for you, Alan. Oh, oh thank you. Um, it's, it's an extraordinary, extraordinary experience for me, which it feels often that way for me in meditation. But in the way this has come together today, the entirety of it is very, um, 
extraordinary. Um, so Valerie's here. Carson is here. We had a guest who couldn't be here because they have COVID. So it took that. And then it's fascinating to me because the name of the piece is The Lighthouse, and that's what I chose. And Valerie, you pointed this out to me a few days ago in your email. That's what I had chosen for my logo, um, for my mentorship. And my dog's name is Lele. She's named after the ukulele. So I can go on and on and on with with connections that make this very extraordinary for me. And then there's the piece itself, which I agree, Martha, felt very spiritual to me. And I felt that whirling dervish uh, segment of it very much, Valerie, like you described it. And it really did feel like a journey. And I don't know where we went. I also love the fact we couldn't understand the languaging, which just allowed for that journey to unfold without judgment and all that goes around with the words. So it was spiritual, extraordinary, deep, moving, and really grounding. And like I said, in this turbulent world we're in, where we're coming from so much trauma from all that we've been through at this time and is going on, um, your meditation leading in and choosing the mountain and grounding us in that way and then opening us to sound, Valerie, set the stage, and then Carson, the music's incredible. So the whole, the entirety of it for me is, it's spiritual and I don't understand how this happened today because it all took place in thinking, well, what are we going to talk about now that our guest is canceled? That all happened in like the five minutes before we came on. And it took Carson, you being here, and Valerie, you being here, and the rest of you here as our community to make that happen. So it's all quite mystical to me. And love is at the heart of it. Thank you for asking, Martha. So in closing, I'd just like to say goodbye and thank everybody, Carson, Valerie, everybody who's here in our community. And um, we'll make this available uh, through Mark Foreman's Sing to the Mountain Studio as another Sounds from the Field episode. So again, we'll, we'll be back together next week. And uh, thank you all for being here this week. Click down below to join our Mindfulness Teacher Community Facebook group, where you're also invited to post and share. Also, subscribe to Sing to the Mountain Studio so you don't miss out on future recordings of live sessions. Mm -hmm.